All right, so we finally got to the routines and habits part, which is, I think I've said this for every, literally for every part, finally we are here, but it's because every single lesson is so important, subhanAllah, and every lesson complements the other, and every lesson explains the other, and every lesson gives you the practical steps for the theory of the previous one. So, subhanAllah, this whole module is... Is, is so important, man. So important. I can't stress it enough. All right. So routines and habits. Routines and habits. We, as human beings, we are creatures, creatures of habit. Our routines define our character and they exert an invisible force on our behavior. Okay. Whatever we do is a function of our practices. Therefore, the best way to achieve any worthwhile Goal is to train ourselves to do the things that will lead to the goal to the goal effortlessly. First of all, sleep. We need to master this. We need to master the sleep. When we sleep, we give the brain and the body time to rest and heal. NREM sleep is responsible for freeing up space in your brain so you can learn new things in the morning. Like I was telling you guys in the earlier lesson, um, when you go sleep, you recharge, right? You recharge throughout the day. The more you talk, the more you see, the more you hear, you, you know, all of that starts to take away from your energy. When you sleep, is your it's like basically like you plug it in your your phone to the to the battery. So usually REM sleep happens ninety minutes. Now there is a difference between NREM sleep and REM sleep. NREM sleep is basically non rapid eye movement REM sleep is rapid eye movement this is the deepest of sleep and there are different stages uh, as we as we're about to see now usually REM sleep happens 90 minutes 90 minutes after you fall asleep the first period of REM typically lasts 10 minutes each of your later REM stages gets longer and the final one may last up to an hour ideally you need four to six cycles of sleep every 24 hours, four to six cycles of sleep every 24 hours to feel fresh, to feel fresh and rested. Each cycle contains four individual stages, three that form non-rapid eye, uh, eye movement sleep and one rapid eye movement sleep. This rapid eye movement sleep is basically when you dream, when you dream and when you are like basically unconscious is that's, you know, you are at your REM sleep. So this is the four stages of sleep. When you are asleep, you go through these four stages if you sleep long enough. So stage one is the lightest sleep, which is almost when you are, when you are awake, when you can hear and, and kind of like uh, type of sleep. Light sleep is when you are sleeping, but any noise will wake you up. Then deep sleep is when your body, they say that deep sleep is when, you know, your body is recovering. And REM sleep is when your brain is, your, you know, it, it, it allows your brain to, to recover. And it's when you, um, when you, you know, when you're working on, on uh, when you're seeing dreams, etc. All right. So now the REM sleep restores your brain for efficient studying, as we said. And for you to get to the REM sleep, it takes on average one to one hour, one, one hour 30. This means that from when you, you fall asleep after one hour to one hour 30 is when you get to the REM sleep. Okay, so for healthy adults, spending 20 to 25% of their time asleep in the REM stage is a good goal. If you get seven, eight hours of sleep, around 90 minutes of that, of that should be REM. Okay, that's for an adult. So to manage this, I use two tools. The first one is a white noise machine. Second one is an aura ring. Okay, what are these? And, and you know, how to get them, which by the way, I'll, I will leave you guys all the links of anything necessary down below. Now the aura ring, basically what it does for me is it tracks my sleep. So when I wake up in the morning, I, by the way, I have a, a Fitbit as well, but I, I, I've seen that the Fitbit uh, is not as accurate as the Aura Ring to track to manage your sleep, like to to give you the stats of your sleep. However, you know it's good as well to to manage your your sleep. 
which I will tell you guys about it anyways. So the aura ring basically tells you how long you have been in your lightest sleep, uh, how long you have been awake. Like you don't even realize how long you are awake throughout the night. You see, many times we say, oh, what time is it now? 10. Okay, so I will wake up at 6, so I will sleep 10, 11, 12. But that doesn't work like that. Like most of the times, out of the whole time you think you was asleep, at least like one hour and a half, two hours, you was awake. And you didn't even realize. So it tells you your REM sleep. It tells you your light sleep, your deep sleep. And through the, basically through, obviously, what you cannot measure, you cannot make better. So... If you measure your sleep and you see, for example, okay, today I ate at 8 p.m. And yesterday my REM sleep was good. But, but, but before yesterday I ate at 10 p.m. And I've seen that my REM, even though I slept the same time, my REM sleep wasn't good, for example. So you can track and see based on, okay, today I worked out and, I, and my deep sleep was, was, you know, many hours or like a big percentage of my whole sleep. And it's true that I feel more refreshed. Or today I slept nine hours and I'm more tired. And my REM sleep is not that. So basically based on your routines and based on your habits, you can see what benefits your sleep and what does not benefit your sleep. Um, it's good as well, the aura ring, because it tells you, for example, if you start to get sick, you see when your body starts to, like your bones hurt and, and you feel weak, like your aura ring check, sees that as well. Like, oh, it seems like you, you start to get sick, your HR, um, HRV balance, your blood pressure or, you know, resting heart rate, etc. is not good enough. Uh, so it shows the app that and it tells the app that, you know, something's going on in your body that is not normal. And, uh, and you know, you're getting sick. So uh, actually, I caught I caught COVID about two years ago. And, and I saw it in the app before I actually started feeling it. So, so, you know, it's good as well for you to start attacking. Like if you start to think that you might start getting sick, start like taking, you know, ginger, honey, uh, turmeric, lemon juices or teas uh, in order for you to, um, to, to attack that uh, sickness early. So, so aura ring. Second thing, white noise machine. What does the white noise machine do? It basically blocks out background noises that would make you wake up and break your sleep cycles. So, as we said, guys, you need, you know, this is like, um, it's so important that you sleep for a long period of time. Matter of fact, they say that interrupted sleep is worse than lack of sleep. And by the way, interrupted sleep it was a way and lack of sleep as well it was a way of um it is a way of uh of um of punishment in a way of um what's the word is a is a way of torture they use it as third as torture they used it in uh in places like guantanamo and places like this as torture if you watch the documentaries so and and it's because it really messes you up like not sleeping it really messes you up so when you sleep it's not good it messes you up as well, obviously to a lower scale, but it's still messing you up. So the white noise, what it does is basically this sound. Uh, you can make a white noise sound or a fan sound. And basically you start to like your brain and subconscious mind is focused and hears this sound. So you don't hear the background noises. It might be a dog barking in the street or it might be you know, I don't know, something happening, whatever it might be, that thing, that sound might wake you up. Like might, you might be on the cycle of REM sleep or deep sleep. And because of that sound, you go up to the lightest sleep. And now you have to start that cycle again. So what happens is that you don't get the four to six cycles that a regular person needs in his regular sleep, let alone if you if you actually get up, like you open your eyes, like, oh, what happened? And then you have to go back to sleep. And it takes one to one hour and a half to get to the REM sleep. Imagine you wake up every hour or you wake up every couple of hours and you never get REM sleep. And as we said, the REM sleep is when you see dreams. Now, ask yourself, when is the last time you saw a dream? And my friend, <laughs> last time he, he said, yeah, how do you dream so much? I never dream, man. It's like, well... You go sleep late and you work early in the morning, 
you don't take care of, the, of your sleep. On average, he sleeps like five to six hours. He never dreams. And to be honest with you, you know, he, he's, he's not too sharp in terms of like sharpness of memory, etc., etc. So this is how important it is that many people neglect sleeping. So or ring to track your, you know, to, to measure and to, to see your stats, etc. White noise machine to not wake up to not wake up uh, and to, you know, complete those cycles to get to the REM sleep and, and have good sleep. Now, sleeping between 90 and 110 minutes gives you your body time to complete one full cycle, one full sleep cycle, and can minimize grogginess when you wake up. Um, in fact, the studies determined that a, f- that a full night of interrupted sleep is equivalent to no more than four hours of consecutive sleep in terms of how you will likely feel and act the next day. After several sleep sleepless nights, the mental effects become more serious. Your brain will fog, making it difficult to concentrate, learn new things, and make decisions. And obviously, that, that might cause stress, that might cause anxiety, that stress and anxiety might cause actual diseases so you know like sleep is so important that's why i said the first thing the first habit the first um routine that we need to adapt and fix is our sleep is our sleep to be more effective right so the white noise machine this is what the what it sounds like don't get scared because many people they they tell me the first time i tell them about it you're like how can you sleep with that noise so this is it has different noises these are the ones I like personally it can go it can go louder from this you can put the volume up and down and as well you can set 60 minute cycles so if you click in if you click on here one two three four five in five hours it will turn off basically all right and this is the oral ring that i wear before going to sleep as you guys can see it's probably so tired already from from wearing it and uh and yeah, I don't like wearing it throughout the day. It, it can count your calories burnt, etc. as well. But um, it's just uncomfortable too. I'm not a ring guy, first of all. And second of all, it's not, I don't know, it's just not aesthetic. It's not comfortable for me to wear rings. So I don't wear it throughout the day. That's why I wear the Fitbit, which uh, counts my calories, steps, etc. Uh, the oil ring doesn't count steps, Just it just counts calories. Um, and then the eye mask, the eye mask, um, you know, in, in case you cannot block out the whole room, like make it a really dark room. I highly recommend to have a, um, a, uh, a, to have a eye mask. So how to get a good REM sleep, which is the most important sleep, develop a sleep or actually, they say that deep sleep is the most important thing, that even if you don't get REM sleep and you get deep sleep, you will still feel refreshed. But as we said, REM sleep is the one that works for your creativity creativity, and your, um, you know, of your sharpness in terms of your, your mind, etc. And your brain and your, and, you know, regenerating new neurons, etc. So how to get a good REM sleep? Develop a sleep schedule. Okay, go to bed. Go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. This primes your body for sleep and waking. Don't drink caffeine, let alone smoke cigarettes, shisha later in the day. These are stimulants and can interfere interfere with your sleep. Put together a relaxing sleep routine before bed. Warm bath, relaxing sounds in the house, no bright lights, or quietly reading uh, are good. Are all good uh, activities. Get regular exercise. Try to get about 20 to 30 minutes a day, but do do so several hours before bed. This could be 
fast paced walking as well. Uh, make sure you don't do it like right before going to sleep, like do it at least three hours before going to sleep. Because after you work out, your body's still and your blood still running very fast. So, so one thing that I have realized is that I get good sleep when I have a good one hour of walking. A good one hour of walking, around five kilometers of walking, uh, I get a very good sleep after that. And I feel like if I worked out, matter of fact, I realized that running 30 minutes, I burn the same amount of calories and I feel kind of like the same amount of tired running 30 minutes then walking and and walking one hour is pretty much I, I burn the same calories and feel the same amount of of tiring obviously you don't work as much as your muscles than when you're running but if you're not a you know workout person etc adapt a walking routine to get a better a better sleep matter of fact if you if you can even get if you you know if you live in places i know places like for example canada and the u.s people don't really walk outside like that so you can get a, a running machine in the house or a walking machine in the house and do one, one hour of walking while you're revising your words, while you're listening to, a, to, a, to an audio book or podcast or whatever it might be. Uh, five, create an ideal environment for sleep. That means no bright lights. My advice is block out like a room that is all dark or wear, if not, wear an eye mask. Uh, not too hot and not too cold. The, the best or, you know, the, the adequate temperature is 40, uh, 20, 24 Celsius, 24 degrees Celsius. And don't watch television, look at the phone, iPad or computer screen within one hour before going to bed. Very important. But these anyways, as we said, or actually we didn't say it yet, we, we're about to say it. We are going to make sure we lock our phone before going to sleep. We'll talk about it in a bit. If you can sleep, don't lie in bed awake. Get up and go into another room and do something quietly, like read or listen to something relaxing until you are sleepy. Seven, replace your pillows. If, you, if you've had your pillows for more than a year, consider replacing them. This might make you more comfortable for sleep. Number two of the routines that we need to adapt, plan your tomorrow today. Planning ahead for tomorrow reduces, reduces stress and saves time is a proactive approach for controlling your schedule versus allowing it to control you. It, it also gives you a chance to build daily structure. So in the morning, uh, sorry, in the night, before going to sleep, you take five to 10 minutes to look at your tomorrow's, tomorrow's uh, uh, schedule and tomorrow's calendar day. Uh, you know, see, you know, the things that obviously you, you will have had prepared your whole week in terms of like your studies, etc. On Sunday, for example. So there are certain things that are already going to be in place. However, still look tomorrow, like think, okay, tomorrow morning, the first thing, deep work. So tomorrow I need to wake up. As soon as I take a shower, I will sit down and start memorizing, etc., etc. Like plan your tomorrow today. So that way, when you wake up, you already know what, you, what you're about to do. You start doing, etc. It, 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 that way it doesn't control you. Like... You wake up in the morning, your wife say, oh, you don't remember? We need to go get it. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. Oh, you know, because you didn't put it in your calendar and you, you didn't prepare the, the day before. So now you was about to sit down and memorize, but your wife, you already told your wife you was going to do, do this. And now it's messed up your morning and now it's controlling you. It's controlling you. You're not controlling your structure, your day. Number three lock your phone away so important you guys see this right here and like i told you guys everything i'm preaching here everything i'm telling you guys to do everything i'm preaching everything i tell you guys that i use i use it for my own benefit and i'm telling you guys because it's so beneficial okay i don't get any benefit i'm not paid by anyone no promotions or anything this right here it's literally made me so productive. And if it wasn't because of this type of routines and this type of habits, probably you wouldn't even be watching Andrew's Institute today because Andrew's Institute was built upon this discipline. I have spent a whole year, like imagine this. I think I didn't say this, or I don't say it enough. 
a whole year, I spent a whole year by myself, away from family, in an apartment that was my grandmother's apartment. I didn't pay no rent I, because I was broke, etc. And I had a 10,000 debt that particular year. I didn't do anything other than implement and start this um, these habits. That was in 2018. I read uh, I read 12 books that changed, you know, my whole perspective on on my life, etc., on my habits, etc. And and yet yeah, all of this this is as a side note, uh, you know, all of this to say that when you implement these habits in your life, you are able to build and you are able to accomplish very nice things and very you know. And things that people will admire, and it, and it only comes like the base of of like the the roots of that things and the basement of that thing is these routines and these habits. So this right here is for you to log your phone away. This phone has been logged now for like for like three days. Um, it's my social media phone. I have all the social media in here, and um, and that's what I advise you guys. And this is what they call what they call choice architecture intervention. If your phone is available when you wake up, you will more likely feel the urge to pick it up and check notifications, messages, etc. If you lock it away before going to sleep, when you wake up, you won't get distracted by it. So this right here, you guys will be able to, and by the way, I advise you guys to get this size that you guys see on screen instead of this one, because this one is small. And if you want to do this, for example, with your significant other, or you want to put something in here other than the phone this is very small however it's good because i i do travel a lot and uh and yeah i just uh you know i just took this one for my phone but before i had a iphone pro max and it, it couldn't it couldn't fit in there so um so yeah uh, the link of to get all of these things is going to be down below like i said guys so lock your phone away when preparing to go to sleep. Locking your phone away needs to become a daily habit of yours if we can get rid of it completely. Because obviously, you know, a phone, you might get important calls, family, etc. Nowadays, the phone, it became a necessity. So if you cannot, you know, uh, get rid of it completely, at least, uh, you know, block it, uh, like lock it away from one time to another time. Like for example, when I was building building under this institute, I used to block my phone uh, away from 6 p.m. Sorry, from from uh, from 9 p.m. to 6 p.m. So my phone was unlocked for three hours per day. For three hours per day, I would check, I would you know respond to messages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Nowadays, what I do is I have two phones. I have this one that is locked and this one that I basically don't have, nobody has this phone number except for family and and I don't have any app except for things that, that are necessary. And, and yes, psychologically, yes, like you can say, well, you can still download social media and, but, you know, psychologically, since you've made all of these efforts, it's almost like, it's almost like you can't even do it. Like, it's, I don't know how to explain it. I'm pretty sure there's an explanation for this. But once you make the effort to do something and you, and you like, you know, you, you encrypt in your, in your mind that, okay, this phone is just for work and it's just for family. It doesn't have any social media, etc. It's, it's basically the same, the same um, or they call it actually, actually designing for laziness. Designing for laziness, where you are not going to go ahead and download, like, you don't love enough, like, social media and the things that distract you, for you to, like, feel the urge of, like, going and downloading. Maybe in the beginning, when your dopamine levels are very high, yes, but if you get, if you detox from it for, like, a day, like, 24 hours, you will feel that those dopamine levels for social media and things that distract you on the phone, you don't find the taste anymore and you wouldn't go out your way to download the app and, you know, put your password, etc., etc., just to feel a little bit of dopamine. And if you do so, it will be hard for you to get rid of it again. It's just like a drug. So, so yeah, this has been my, this has been my, um, my way on how to 
get rid of distractions. Uh, so you just have to find your your sweet spot, basically your your way on how to do so. And this is one of the best ones, like locking your phone in the like since you do your deep work in the morning and your studies in the morning, lock it from 9 p.m. for example to 9 a.m. and do your work in the morning. And that way you don't feel you don't feel the urge of picking it up in the morning. So before going to sleep and before going into deep work mode, we must lock the phone away. As well, there is an app, guys, that has tremendously helped me, um, which is called Focus. Okay, and Focus is, is an app, basically, that, uh, that can, on your laptop, because obviously maybe you don't have your phone, and now you feel the urge to check Instagram from your desktop, or check YouTube, or check Amazon, or check FaceTime and messages on, on the laptop, right, which is possible, or emails as well. So through this app, Focus, you can, um, you can basically set uh, times, as you can see here, up here, as you can see up here, I can usually, what I do is I do, I do four hours, four hour block, blockages, or two hours, like if it's something that doesn't require much time. And basically what it does, it literally, like for example, let's do it for, for 10 minutes. Okay, so now it's blocked, it's blocked for 10 minutes. Okay, and before, before this, you can actually go to preferences and, and it allows you to, uh, to, you know, to, to know which apps you want to, which websites you want to block out and which apps you want to block out, etc. So now, for example, if I wanted to go to, um, if I wanted to go to, to YouTube and, and watch something, it literally doesn't allow me. Same for Facebook, for example. It doesn't allow me. Uh, Instagram. It block. It blocks it. So you know, focus is very good. It, it helps me tr tremendously. You can block out not only websites but as well apps on your laptop, like mail. Uh, messages, FaceTime, etc., etc., and yeah, it's just a way to get rid of distractions to do your work. Because obviously, if you're going to be attending the lessons and watching the lessons, you're going most likely going to be in your desktop. So you might feel the urge of, oh, let me check YouTube. All and next thing you know, you have been watching videos for thirty minutes, forty minutes, three hours. It can go crazy. So, so yeah, Focus is another app to have a must-have in order for you to uh, focus. Now, number four is eat clean. Okay, eat clean. One thing that I use personally, that I have adapted for the past three years as well, is intermittent fasting. And basically intermittent fasting, all indications show that intermittent fasting not only has positive effects on your body, like weight loss and improvement uh, of risk factors in respect of heart diseases, diabetes, and the like, it also has an extremely positive effect on your brain, allowing increased levels of focus and memory retention. And this basically can simply be explained by, and what, what intermittent fasting is, basically you only eat, there is different ways of intermittent fasting. Me, I do this one, the 16-8, 16-8. So basically, um, I just have two meals per day and they are not, the first one is just a, a shake and the second one is a is a full meal. So basically to easy explain this is the first for the first 6 hours of after you wake up you don't eat 6 7 hours. So me personally I do it at 1 p.m. So at 1 p.m. I take my shake uh you know I do a shake you know I I track my calories and stuff uh me personally so you know in terms of like protein and carbs and things like that so you don't have to be that specific but what i do is at 1 p.m i i eat my shake you could do like oats you could do something healthy something clean something like don't go ahead and like break your intermediate fasting at 1 p.m with uh you know what i mean like something super greasy like fried chicken and or a mcdonald's meal or something like come on like you know something clean it could be a green juice, it can be a meal, uh, a shake with like fruits and, and oats and, and things like that. 
And then what I do uh, in between 5 p.m., depending on the day, in between 5 p.m. to uh, to uh, to 8 p.m., depending on what time did I went to the gym, if I went to the gym that day, etc. Did I say 1 p.m.? I said in between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m., I eat uh, one meal. I eat one meal. Uh, and uh, And yeah, that's what I do. And this allows you to basically, in the morning when you do your deep work, uh, if you eat in the morning right after you wake up, your brain is going to be focused on, on the digestion of your body, of, your, of the food. However, if you don't have food in your stomach, you're going to be able to focus better. And, uh, and if you don't believe it, just try it. You will see. So intermittent fasting is what allows me to, uh, to stay you know, productive in the mornings and, uh, and not only stay productive, but stay, stay lean you know, stay at a uh, low body fat percentage. Of course, you know, I, I mean, you can still eat crazy in eight hours. Like you can st still eat a bunch of calories in eight, in eight hours and still be fat. But um, but if you eat like re if you eat regularly and clean and uh, you know a healthy meal, uh, most of the times it it allows you to keep a low body percentage which obviously allows you to, you know, look automatically better and feel better about yourself. And of course, you know, look better for your significant other, whether you're a brother, whether you're a sister. Al-Imam uh, al-Shafi'i, قال al-Imam al-Shafi'i, al-Shib'u yuthqilu al-Badan wa yuzilu al-Fitna wa yajlibu al-Nawma wa yudha'ifu sahibahu an al-Ibadah. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i said, a full stomach makes your body heavy and hinders your mental sharpness. Attracts sleepiness and weakens the person's the person preventing him to worship correctly or to worship, you know, at a very good level. So, so yeah, this is not something new. Like you know, the the you know we have Salaf that have predecessors that have preceded us with this type of um, of diets, and and it's proven that it makes you more sharp in terms of your your mental sharpness. And as well from the from the Sunan of the Salaf and the predecessors, here you can see reported by Ibrahim ibn Adham in the Jami' al-Ulum wal-Hikam. He says, whoever takes control over his stomach will control his religion. And whoever dominates his hunger will achieve righteous manners. Indeed, the disobedience of, the disobedience of Allah is far from the hungry, from the person who is hungry, close to shaitan. And a full stomach kills the heart as well as extreme joy, happiness, and laughter. So, you know, when you take control of your stomach, like, you are able to, you don't eat based of, oh, man, this looks so good, I want to eat it. No, you eat, like, based of necessity. Like, I eat what is necessary for me to keep a good energy and, you know, not feel so tired and have my nutrients, uh, my the nutrients that our body needs and the minerals that our body needs have them in a day. So I eat based on necessity, not based on based on desire and like, oh, oh, I just want to eat and eat and eat. That makes your body heavy. It weakens your you know your um, your sharpness, your mental sharpness, etc. And it just messes up your heart. All right. So um, uh, number five, by the way, uh, something that I didn't add, Al -Ibn, Al Imam Ibn Al Qayyim, he said that the best foods is the is the foods of that comes out of earth. So you know, any vegetables, uh, things like that, that's the be the best type of of foods. Obviously, processed foods and things like that, try and avoid it. Greasy foods, try and avoid them. Oily, too many oils, too many spices, too flavory. Try to avoid all of that. Eat as clean as possible. Five, exercise. Okay, exercise at least three times per week. Go to the gym and follow a workout plan or at least get 10,000 steps per day. Like we said, if you, don't, if you are not a, uh, you know, a workout person, gym person, or you don't have, you, if you're a sister and there is no woman gym around you, etc., just get a running, uh, a running uh, machine home and, and get your 10,000 steps in per day or just walk outside 10 10,000 steps per day while you listen to the audiobook while you are revising while you listen to the lesson whatever it might be 
And uh, by the way, Android and iPhone have built-in step counters. Uh, but me personally, I use Fitbit, the Fitbit uh, Charge 4. This is the Charge 4. And, uh, and it counts my, my, my calories, my steps. Um, it does your sleep as well. And, uh, and yeah, but it's not as accurate as the Aura Ring. So yeah, you guys will find all of this in the, in the, in the description of the video. The links, I mean. Uh, number six is organization. Your environment is a reflection of you. Keep your study area, house, rooms, desktop, drawers, car, phone, home screen, mailbox, etc. organized. Because your brain is a reflection of your life. If your life is all over the place, everything is messed up, scattered all around, etc., etc., that's how your brain is more likely going to be. Number seven, visualize daily. Every time you go to the bathroom, look, focus just got... Now, the, after the 10 minutes, it gives you a notification that, that you know, now you can access those apps that you, <laughs> that you feel so inclined to access in. So every time you go to the bathroom and have a moment, read your goals and affirmations with intent. So you go to the bathroom, read your goals, your affirmations, that's visualizing. Like visualize where you want to be. Like when you read in six months, I will be speaking Arabic, like actually visualize it and feel as if you were already there. Okay. And, uh, and you can find this in amongst the Salaf as well. At-tafakkur wal-fikra. Uh, it was reported by Ahmad from Muthanna ibn Jamia that a man ate until full, prayed a lot and fasted a lot. And another man ate little and prayed little, voluntary, voluntary prayers, and he reflected and pondered more. Which one is best? So uh, Imam al he was asked, which one is best? So he mentioned, in regards of reflecting, reflecting for one hour is better than prayer one whole night. Reflecting one hour is better than prayer one whole night. Obviously, reflecting, it means like reflecting on, subhanAllah, I'm, I'm a servant of Allah Azza wa in this dunya. You know, life is, is momentary. Um, just reflecting on all of these facts about life. Reflecting on how important it is for me to learn the Arabic language in order for me to build a stronger relationship with Allah since this life is momentary. momentary. All of this is part of reflection. So Imam Ahmed, he said that reflecting for one hour is better than prayer one whole night. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, he said, thinking about the good pushes you to implement it. Naam, at-tafakkur fil khayri yad'u ila al-amali bihi. So the more you think and the more you repeat those affirmations on those things that you want to accomplish, the more it will push you. And as we said before, the more uh, you will keep that emotional attachment with the, with the results and with the goal, which will keep you going. Number eight is set goals. Setting goals helps trigger new behaviors, helps guide your focus and helps your sustain and helps you sustain the momentum in life. Goals also help align your focus and promote a sense of self-mastery. In the end, you can manage what you don't measure and you can improve upon something that you don't properly manage. Just as your sleep, just as your progress in the Arabic language, just as anything else. What you, cannot, what you don't measure, you cannot manage it and you cannot you know, improve on it. If you don't constantly set and track your goals, you will sooner or later lose purpose which will make you lose emotional attachment with the results you were chasing, which will make you lose inspiration, affecting your momentum. And next thing you know, it becomes another goal that you haven't accomplished. Number nine is practice gratitude. Always look into the future can cause fear, anxi can cause fear anxiety, stress. Practice gratitude daily to balance yourself. Number one, track your progress. Number two, contemplate your progress. And number three, thank Allah for the progress, little or big. That will release, you know, a joy about what you have accomplished, which will keep you going. And obviously, you can do that through the performance tracker uh, that we will uh, pro that we provided to you, and um, and through you know tracking your progress with with you know creating the YouTube videos, etc. That will help you to see where you were at. As well, if you uh, apply what I have suggested of like, you know showing your progress to people and, and having this public accountability. The comments, obviously, there's going to be, every time you go public, there's always bad comments and there's always negativity. Everyone that that's doing something good is always 
um, thrown crap at. But there's a lot of people that will give you good uh, compliments and, and comments that will help you to keep on going. So that's another benefit from that. And number nine is focus. F-C-O, F-O-C-U-S, which is which stands for follow one course until success. Develop a sense of urgency and endeavor to single handle every task. To get things done one time, it is essential you develop a sense of urgency and build momentum. When you regularly take continuous action towards your most important goals, you activate the momentum principle of success. The momentum principle of success states that although getting started may seem to take an initial large amount of energy, the energy required to keep going is going to be significantly, significantly less. Every great achievement of human men, of humankind has been preceded by a long period of hard, concentrated work until the job was done. Your ability to choose your essential task to start it and then to focus on it single-mindedly until it is complete is the key to high levels of achievement and personal productivity. To single ta- to single handle a task, you must work only on that task without any distraction from beginning through completion, concentrating on only one thing at a time. As you guys can see, every, as you guys can see, everything that we talk about kind of like evolves around the same type of things. Work only on one task, no distractions. Without any distractions, deep work, from beginning to completion, focus, F-O-C-U-S, concentrating on only one thing at a time. It's, It's a matter of seeing it right through to the end as fast as possible while sidestepping any temptation to stop halfway through, which is what we were talking about, you know, not thinking that the the, gr- the grass is green on the other side. By, foc- by focusing on only one task at a time and avoiding all distractions, you can decrease the time spent on the task by up to 50%. As I show you guys in the diagram, if you focus on eight different things in six months, you will still at 6% of, of uh, you know, completing that task. When if you only focus on one thing at, after six months, you are at 48%. So it definitely decreases 50% of time spent on that particular task if you uh, focus on only one thing. The grass is not greener on the other side. Use this course until you achieve success. It is a proven method that if you apply, success is guaranteed with the permission of Allah. This program has been proven. The method has been proven. I have done it myself. Students have done it. And hundreds of other, other students are in the in the process of doing it. So complete the program and I guarantee you that you are going to get what you're looking for, inshallah, with the tawfiq of Allah. So these guys are going to be our 10 commandments of success in the program. If we want to succeed in the program, we need to make sure we adapt these routines and these rituals and these habits in our life. Number one, sleep, plan tomorrow, today, lock your phone away, eat clean, exercise, organization, visualize daily, set goals, practice gratitude, and focus. Okay, you will be able to... You will be able to find this in the resources section or in the in the description down below. Uh, print it out and and put it in your in your bathroom with your goals and affirmations, or put it in your uh, in your room so so you can see it um, regularly. And um, and with this being said, guys, we have uh, got to the last uh, point of routines and habits. And I will see you guys on the last uh, part of this lesson on the next video. Assalamu alaikum.